Your 9 to 5 doesn't have to be done from a cubicle. In fact, it doesn't have to be 9 to 5 at all. If ever you've dreamed of being able to see the world while working from a laptop, then today's video is for you. So what is a digital nomad? Well, a digital nomad is somebody that leverages modern day technology, cell phones, laptops, a good internet connection to basically be able to work from anywhere in the world. From the beach, coffee shop, co-work space, or from home. Dead battery. Where am I supposed to charge this thing? I'm all the way at the beach. This digital nomad guide has been sponsored today by Michael Kors and today I'm gonna to be showing you the Michael Kors Access Lexington 2 smartwatch. But let me tell you something. This watch, it has the ability to make you teleport. So is being a digital nomad for you? If you're able to be self-directed, if you're extremely disciplined, if you enjoy meeting new people and you have a skill or are willing to learn a new skill that you can monetize online, then the digital nomad lifestyle might be for you. Every single day, there are more and more job opportunities being opened up online. Web developer, virtual assistant, consultant, digital marketer, ad specialist, videographer, YouTuber, photographer, customer support, I'm running out of fingers, online English teacher. This video is not going to be able to tell you how to make your money. It's more serving to show you the lifestyle, some of the facilities that digital nomads have at their disposal, and so many other questions that I get about this lifestyle. So where's the best place to make your home away from home? For you, you might have some special advantage. Maybe you've got family on the other side of the world. You can take it. <laughs> Maybe you have family in Australia that have a basement suite for you. Maybe you know that you can teach abroad and get a free place to stay in Vietnam. That might be the best place for you to stay. But most of us do not have those ground root connections and so we have to plant our own seeds. So what are deemed to be the best spots for digital nomads? Well, the first place is actually one we just came from, Chiang Mai, Thailand. The only place in Southeast Asia that truly rivals Bali's digital nomad scene. It's known for its jungles, its elephants, and it has a large expat community Community with extremely affordable living, even more affordable than Bali. And the amazing thing is we found restaurants all around the city that had incredible food, even a little better than Bali. Yeah. Another few of the incredible destinations to work from are Bangkok, a city I used to live in and absolutely love. Very affordable living and a really big expat community with delicious food. Another one is apparently Cebu, Philippines. I've heard that Cebu City is an up and coming place for digital nomads, but I personally can't vouch that one yet, especially with the internet speeds. And the last one that I've experienced is Lisbon, a city that we love, a city of color, of culture, of vibrancy, and definitely somewhere I would love to try working for a month or two. So why Bali? Well, number one reason is because of the island itself. This is a volcanic tropical island with incredible green rice fields as far as you can see, mountain tops that reach the skies, not to mention you only have to go five minutes, maybe half an hour tops depending on where you are, to get from being in a trendy coffee shop to being out and connected with nature. But there are a few other reasons. Cost of living. It's unbelievably affordable to be here. I just did a full video dedicated to 30 days worth of expenses. It'll be linked down below. But in that video, I calculated roughly 37 US dollars per day to have a really good quality of life. But if you want to do things on the cheap, it can be done for $20 a day. Now to anyone that's a digital nomad, this right here is going to be one of the top facilities that you can have. This is a co-work space. It's somewhere where you can hang out, meet other like-minded people that are currently traveling to work on their businesses or working remotely. And let me show you why so many people come here to really focus on their work. You've got super fast internet. We're talking like up to 75 upload and download. And if you come upstairs, it's gotta be a little more quiet here because this is the silent area where you're not allowed to talk to other people. Now one other thing that's really great about these co-work spaces is the community that you can build and they have lots of different events going on every week and as a member there are certain events that are free, some of them will cost a little bit of money, they have an island hopping trip, they have socials where they get together and have like a barbecue. It can be a really great way to make a new place feel like home. So this one right here is Outpost and it's probably tied for the largest workspace in Changu. There's one other I want to show you. This right here is the dojo and this is the first ever co-work space in Changu area. We've got silent areas to work, we've got a coffee shop, and if you come all the way to the back, this is what greets you. 
Now I've actually not used either one of these co-working spaces, but I will say they're very similar in their offerings and pricing is quite similar. You're looking at almost 200 US dollars for an entire unlimited use month where you've got like a mailing address, you've got a storage locker, and of course access to an incredible community. So you've got a lot of things that you're getting with that, but it's a lot of money. You can also do a drop-in fee for about $18 US. And one of the great things is they're open 24 seven. So this right here takes the co-work space and the hostel and combines them together. This is Tribe Theory. And and this is a beautiful, beautiful place to call home for a few nights, to be able to meet people who are also working on their passions. This one isn't located near the beach in Chenggu. It's probably about 10 to 20 minutes out in Babakan area, but it's a fantastic area that still keeps you close to everything. And shared rooms start around $15 a night, whereas the private one's gonna cost you more like $25 to $28 a night. Thank you so much. All packed up, a little bit of work done, a coconut, a pasta, and an Instagram post that's ready to go. The Lexington 2 smartwatch is actually powered with Wear OS by Google. And one of the awesome things is certain terminals will allow you to pay using Google Pay. So you just tap your watch right to the terminal, and just like that, you're all ready to go. If you choose to make Bali your next digital nomad home base, then you'll need to know which area to pick. My current number one choice is going to be Chenggu, Bali. It's where I've chosen to set up shop. It's gonna be the most hip and happening place on the island. It's got everything you're looking for from endless restaurants, coffee shops. It's got the digital nomad facilities like the co-work spaces. And it's also got endless nightlife and a pretty decent surf scene. It's not the best in Bali, but it has one. The second place you should know about is Ubud, and that is the center of Bali. It's going to be a lot greener, a lot more lush, and a few degrees cooler. And with that, it's quite a bit less busy than Changu, but it's definitely gotten a lot busier over the past few years. It's no zen hideaway, but with that, you have incredible facilities. Again, restaurants, coffee shops, you've got more co-work spaces. You actually have Hubud, which is the brother facility to Dojo in Changu. You also have two different outpost co-work spaces that you have everything that you pretty much have in Chenggu just less the surf scene, slightly less crowds, definitely less of a nightlife scene. Now, one other thing you should know about Ubud is it definitely caters towards a very spiritual, holistic travel community. You have tons of different yoga retreats and facilities. You've got a massive and ever-growing vegetarian and vegan community. So if you're into that kind of food, you'll have so much selection up there. Each have their own pros and cons, and neither one of them are exactly hidden secrets anymore. But if you do wanna find places that are a bit more off the map, you should actually check out Sanur or the in Uluwatu because you can definitely find slightly cheaper cost of living and still have access to fairly good infrastructure that allows you to run your business. Now one of the not so great things about Bali is every time you come back to your motorbike it feels like you're sitting on top of Satan. <laughs> I can feel my bun sizzling. Sit on mine. Sit on yours? Yeah please. This is love everyone. I'm gonna absorb the heat for her. <laughs> it hurts. Alright guys, I am giving you a little preview of the Lost Casa. I'll be doing a full house tour shortly. I'm really excited to show you guys my first ever home. It's so exciting for me to really just grow my roots here in Bali. Yeah, there's construction going on upstairs. It wasn't completely finished when we moved in. I don't want to complain because this is literally the most exciting thing ever to be moving in. It's but okay, I will complain. We'll complain. It's being a pain in the butt to move. The AC is finally working down here a little bit, which is good because yeah. it was not working when we first came and it was so hot. Okay, Google, remind me at 8.30 to catch a flight. So today is a big day. We are gonna be traveling around Indonesia for the next eight days as we go through Lombok and Bali. And the amazing thing is I'm actually working with the tourism board. So this morning is one of my few windows to try to keep ahead, keep my head above water. So I've been doing emails, phone calls, doing a few photos here for Instagram. So. We're all packed up, we're ready to go, and one of the awesome features of the Michael Kors Lexington watch is that you can actually set notifications, reminders, it's all synced up with your phone. I've just been reminded it is time to leave the house, otherwise we might miss a flight. What? The car is here. That is some door-to-door -door service right here. I'm not gonna show you guys all the trip. I'll be making a full separate video on that, but thought I'd give you a little behind the scenes to the digital nomad lifestyle. Welcome to Gilly Tea. We are 
all checked into the room. Now as a digital nomad, there's one expense that you might not have taken into consideration and it's worth talking about, and that is going to be health insurance and healthcare as a whole. As a traveler, you will need your own private healthcare, your own private insurance that will keep you safe, whether you're in a motorbike incident or you simply eat the wrong thing and end up in the hospital for a few days. I pay almost 2,000 US dollars a year, but with that, it gives me a high level of protection. My health insurance will heli lift me out of Gili T if I'm in rough shape. It will take me directly to Singapore or the nearest healthcare facility that is properly equipped to take care of me if I'm in critical conditions. It is an expense that you cannot spare. I have seen it backfire on people so, so badly. Do not cheap out on this. It's just one of the expenses of any digital nomad and traveler at that. Finished up with site number one, and right now, one of the hardest rains I have ever seen. It's finally slowing up. You would never expect for a smartwatch to be able to handle water, but not only can you put it out in the rain, you can actually swim with this Michael Kors watch. It's actually good up to 30 meters of depth. A freaking unbelievable sunset. That was one to remember. We were so, so lucky. It was incredible, but make sure you go to the bathroom because if you don't use that one... I swear, I didn't pee. <laughs> Haggis, you should sponsor this video. Oh yeah, that'd be dope. Hello, good evening. Good evening. Another day, another room. One thing you need to keep in mind as a digital nomad is that you're going to be responsible for your own equipment. And Depending on what it is that you want to do, that's going to be a very real expense. I've now invested probably, if I were to guess, almost $30,000 in my equipment. From underwater housings, cameras, lenses, memory cards, the list is never ending and the equipment is ever breaking. This bag and a couple others basically contain my entire livelihood. But when you get started, you don't need to buy the best. My first ever camera was a GoPro Hero 4 Silver. That's what got me started on my journey today. But it wasn't going to take me to my end destination, so with time, I've had to upgrade. No matter what it is that you're doing, the same principles apply. You need to get started with whatever you have or whatever you can afford, and with time, build your way up. But if you're taking this seriously, start setting aside some money and start figuring out what the equipment is that you actually need and not the equipment that you just sort of want. Slowly move away. <laughs> Holy. Oh my They're a gang of monkeys. We were surrounded, dude. I'm, I'm shaking. Let's talk about getting paid. The first thing you need to know is that as a digital nomad, you'll likely be getting different currencies from all over the world. Your clients will no longer be in one place. At least that's the case for my business. What you're gonna wanna have is a bank account that doesn't nickel and dime you for foreign exchange rates, that doesn't nickel and dime you for receiving telegraphic transfers or SWIFT payments. While I'm going to keep this section brief because there's a whole video that could be done on that, I can give you guys a big recommendation which is a company by the name of TransferWise. I've been using it now for about two years and what I love about the service is that you can either hold the currency you're receiving so if you're being paid in euro you can hold the euro if you're being paid US dollar you can hold the US dollar and not have to pay any foreign exchange fee but if you want to convert it to your own home currency you do have the option to do that and they typically have the best foreign exchange rates that you can get on the market for certain uses I still use my Canadian home bank and I also occasionally do use PayPal although I do try to avoid PayPal at all costs their exchange rates and their everything Rates are pretty horrifically high. While it may look like rainbows and butterflies as a digital nomad, there's some real cons to this lifestyle and str struggles. <laughs> Truly, it's not all perfect. For one, you no longer have a guaranteed income. When you become a digital nomad, when you set off into a new place in the world and you start trying to make money from a laptop, you will have weeks where there's no business, where you have no income coming in. And so how do you keep the lights on? How do you afford food for yourself? There's going to be these moments in your career that stress you, that push you to your limits. I've had many of them now. Just be aware, there's going to be some difficult times ahead. While it may look all pretty and beautiful, sitting by pools, drinking from coffee shops, the side that you don't often see is the incredible amount of hard work that goes in behind the scenes. While you may have worked nine to five for somebody else, now you are working 
any set hours of the day, sometimes seven days a week with no breaks for three months and you're still not even sure if you're gonna get paid, that's the reality. Especially up front, the hard work is going to be immense. Now this is my biggest struggle as an entrepreneur and self-employed person is when do I take a break? I'm a bit of a workaholic and I don't say that proudly because it's not always positive. It's sometimes good to be able to step away from your work and I struggle with that. From client deadlines to my weekly upload, there's so many things going on in a given week that it's almost impossible for me to ever take a full day off. I've had my fair share of mini burnouts, but the only reason I've never had a full catastrophe burnout is because I truly love what I do. So even if nobody was paying me, I would still be doing this. I hope for your sake you're able to find something that you love to do while becoming a digital nomad. Now this is something that most people won't talk about, but it's something I experience from time to time, and it's loneliness. Sometimes you'll be working incredibly long hours and you'll be at your desk, isolated, editing with your headphones in, while you may be surrounded by other people, maybe you're lacking a deep connection, maybe you're about to board a 30 hour flight going from Canada to Bali, and during those moments, you are alone. And especially when you're traveling solo, these moments do add up and they may take a toll on some more than others. Any entrepreneur knows that one of the most difficult things is time management. Do I work on Facebook? Do I work on Twitter? Do I shoot a video for Instagram? Or do I respond to comments on YouTube? These are everyday dilemmas, and if it's not social media for you it's whatever your domain is but it never gets easier to figure out which of these many battles do I choose because you'll never be able to do everything that's a fact and one of the last things I want to mention is that people likely will not identify or understand what you're doing now for me it didn't ever bother me but for some people they want to be accepted and they want to feel normal and what we're doing is very unnormal it will definitely get some pushback maybe it's from your parents from your close friends this lifestyle has definitely separated me from the fringe friends and pulled me closer to my real friends. My girlfriend and my coworker. But girlfriend first. I always joke that Kathy and I's relationship is just really a, a long term collaboration. <laughs> yeah? Sure. He wants my followers, I want his passport. <laughs> One more thing that needs to be said is visas. If you're planning to travel anywhere in the world, of course you need to be aware of what the visa situation is, and especially if you plan to work. With that, an entire video could be covered on this topic. I'm not gonna get into it today, but if it's something you wanna hear more about, just comment it down below, and I'll definitely try to make that video happen at some point if there's enough demand for it. I'd be curious to hear what your thoughts are after watching this video, and guys, as always, I put a lot of time and love into these videos. If you enjoyed them, please leave a thumbs up. It makes a huge difference. A huge thank you to Michael Kors with their incredibly awesome and sexy smartwatch for sponsoring today's video. Let's get lost again in the next one.